comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. When we spend time reading God's word, faith develops in us, friends, like Rahab's faith. And such faith is a living faith. You will be rescued. to speak to your message entitled, The Faith That Saves. The Faith That Saves. Moses has died. Joshua is taking the children of Israel with a great task of leading them to the promised land. And uh, he's uh, been encouraged by God in the chapter 1 to tell that uh, he's with him. Don't be afraid. Meditate on God's word. In chapter 2, we find Joshua takes some steps towards conquering the promise. And he selects two spies. In chapter 2, verse 1, Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies to Shittim. Earlier, 20 years back, when they sent the spies, they sent how many spies? 10 spies. 12 spies, right? And uh, uh, these spies went as a big uh, uh, announced spying. And they went and came back with negative report, 10 of them. And because of which, there was a huge uproar in the camp. And Joshua has learned his lessons. This time he's just calling two spies. And very secretly, without even telling anybody in the camp, he has prepared this man and he knew that they will do the job. And he's sending them to spy secretly. The Israelites doesn't know it. The Canaanites doesn't know it. So probably they would have left the camp by night crossed over, swam over River Jordan and early morning without any, uh, any, anyone noticing, they would have got into the, the city of Jericho. Go look over the land, he said, and especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. They were looking for a house near the walls of Jericho where if they were spotted, they could uh, come out. They were looking for a house which had an uh, entry out of the uh, uh, city without getting into the main gate. So they found a lodge and uh, somebody took them to that lodge. And uh, when they found what was happening in that lodge, they were never happy about it. They never expected to be in the place where they are in. And all the business that was happening, suddenly women are there from every room and And they're talking, what's wrong with this house? And they finally find out that it is a house that was given into prostitution. And here is a lady who is living a very sinful life and who is leading a very wicked life. And God, as he is going to punish the entire city that is full of wickedness and adultery, somehow this woman escapes and she comes into the fold of God. In verse 2 it says, the king of Jericho, uh, he uh, was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here to spy out the land. These men went as CIDs, but they were hardly any experience. They did not have any experience in doing this secret work. So they were obviously found out, probably in the house of Rahab, or as they were entering into the house of Rahab. The king sent his messengers to Rahab to find out, who are those spies who have entered your house? Verse 3. So the king sent his message to Rahab, bring out the men who came to you and entered your house. Because they have come to spy out the whole land. The king was fearing invasion from the Israelites because he has heard about them. And he feared that. And when he knew that the spies have come, he was alarmed and he didn't want to, him somebody to take over the throne that he was ruling in. Verse 4. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. This woman knows how to commit a crime. And she knows how to commit it in such a way that nobody will know that. That's the secret of her profession. And she said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. Verse 5 says, at dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. She lied to them. I don't know which day, where they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. A common behavior among the heathens is to pass on a lie without even feeling bad about it. And a profession had got so deep-rooted in her life 
that she always lied and she kept on lying. And to tell a lie to save God's people was a simple task for her. She acted very, very true when she was telling a lie. And the king's soldiers, they would have been in the secret army. They would have been very smart guys who knows when people tell lies. And they've got fooled out of a woman who is into prostitution. And friends, how many times we pass on a lie and we, we don't feel bad about it talking a lie for the sake of some good thing. But lie is lie. When we tell lie, it is a lie in the presence of God. And God says no liars will enter the kingdom of God. We need to be righteous people and be careful when we pass on a lie with our mouth. And what we lost because she lied, we lost a miraculous way, even though they were presented before the king, how the king could have protected these two spies. King would have definitely protected. God who protected Joseph and Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, this God is able to protect these two men, even though she had exposed them. And we lost out that in the pages of history, because here is a woman who lied, and which was a common behavior for them. Verse 6. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. Now, in those days, people would finish the harvest and take the straw and put it on the roof so that it can be dried. And once it is dried, they will tie it into bundles measuring uh, uh, with a height of four to five feet. And this men found it very convenient to go behind the flags uh, that are arranged on the terrace and they just hid themselves from the king's people. And, uh, and uh, verse 7 says, so the men set out. The men set out after searching a house to the pursuit of spies on the road that leads to the forts of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers, uh, pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. They were so afraid. They even shut the gate that nobody can go out. If the spies by any chance are inside the city, somehow they could get a hold of them. Verse 8 and 9. But the, before the spies lay down for the night in the terrace, before they could lay down for the night, she went up to the roof and she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us. So that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Verse 11, 10 and 11, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. What you did to Shion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear. Everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. What a heart she has got. Yes, she is in that bad profession, but she heard about God and she believed in that God, that God is a God who is God in heaven and on the earth below. So now, this man went afraid. Joshua was probably afraid. That's why God told him to be courageous. Do not be afraid. And this man who went into that foreign land would have been very afraid. And you know what they heard? They heard that the enemies that they were afraid of, they were in fact even more afraid of these people. And can you imagine the morale that would have gone up in the Israelite camp when they came to know that, oh, the Jerichoites, they have got the greatest army. They've got a fort. We don't have a fort. We have a God who is with us. But then we are stronger than the armies. We are stronger than the walls of the enemy. And that's the God that we serve. So they needed to hear that. And she told them that we are really afraid about it. And then she makes a bargain over there. Joshua chapter 2 verse 12 to 13. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father, my mother, my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and that you will save us from death. She knows that death is coming. She knows that she is living in a sinful city. She is doing a sinful profession. Death is imminent and she is asking for salvation from her death. Chapter 2 verse 14. Look at them. Our lives for your lives. You have saved our lives? So sure enough. We are going to save your lives. The men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, 
we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us this land. Verse 2, verse 15. So she led them down by a rope through the window. See, they came in through the main city. They entered through the main gate. But by the way of her profession, she had many routes for her clients to escape. And she led them out through a window. For the house she lived was a part of the city wall. And she said to them, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there three days until they return. And then go on your way. What she was doing? She was also finding out where those king's men had gone. She knew that they are still outside. They are searching. They didn't. She was, see, see how she worked for God? She not only helped these men, but she was always alert in finding out where the king's soldiers have gone and knowing that they have not come back and if the guys meet them up, they are going to be in trouble. She said, you hide in that hills, in the, towards the one side of uh, Jericho are the big limestone hills which will measure around uh, 1,500 to 2,000 feet. And, and it's very easy for somebody to hide in that hills. And uh, to the other side is Jordan and the promised land. And she told them, you wait in that hills for three days till the soldiers have come back and then you can take and go back to your people. And, uh, uh, and verse 21 and 22, agreed she replied, let it be as you say. So she sent them away and they departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Now, what was this? The scarlet cord is a cord with which she dropped this man out. It was a thread that she used to use to bring her clients down through the window if they had to escape without anybody's notice. And when she said, I want you to save me, the men said, use the scarlet cloth. Tie it on that window. Don't take it anywhere. Because when we come and invade the city, this scarlet cloth should be a sign that this house will be protected by the blood of the lamb. So they went to the hills, verse 22, and stayed there three days until the pursuers had searched all along the road and returned without finding them. So a pledge made to a believing woman. Now fast forward with me to Genesis, uh, uh, Joshua chapter 6, where the children of Israel, with all the courage, they are around the walls of Jericho. When the trumpets sound in verse 20, the army shouted six days they had surrounded the walls of Jericho and they marched around it. On the seventh day, they marched around it seven times and now the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they looked and took the city. The walls of Jericho came down as promised by God. Verse 23. So the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father and mother, her brothers and sisters, and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Where did they put them? Outside the camp of Israel. Why did they not bring them to the camp of Israel? They were Gentiles. They had to be a ceremonial cleansing. And there had to be a ritual before they are accepted into the fold of God. So, they, for temporary time, they put them outside the camp of Israel and later brought them into the camp. Verse 24 and 25. Then they burned the whole city. Everything in the city. But they put the silver and gold, the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men. Joshua had sent a spies in Jericho and she lives among the Israelites to this day. After she was outside the camp, she came inside and she started living among the Israelites. Even her descendants are living to this day. What is it that we learn from this part of history that happened in the life of children of Israel? There are many things that we, that we understand in this place, but I just want to concentrate on two things. Number one, sin will be punished at any cost. Sin will be punished. If there was ever a city that deserved 
the punishment and the wrath of God, it was the city of Jericho. Because they had all kind of sexual perversion and idol worship happening over there. And it called for the wrath of God. There was no escaping for people who commit sin. One moment, they were enjoying their wicked lifestyle. They were enjoying what they were doing. But without warning, the walls came down. Without warning, people were put to the sword. And without warning, the city was burned in flames. Sin is a cancer on human society. God wanted the children of Israel to live in Canaan. And if the children of God, who are righteous people, brought by the blood of Jesus, has to live in the land of Canaan, sin had to be eradicated. And God destroyed sin. And from Rahab, here is a woman out of such a sinful city and society, one of the chief sinners of that city is somehow escaped the flames and brought and adopted and grafted into the family of God. So what is the speciality of our life? What is the speciality of our faith? There's something for us to learn, friends. We may be in the wickedest of the wicked generations, but we have the God of Rahab in our lives. We may have a tough past. We may have done unthinkable things in our life, but this morning, through the blood of Jesus, there is redemption and hope and life for those who believe in Jesus. And what did she do that was special that brought her into the fold of God? Number one, true faith is a saving faith. And what is a true faith? Heard about God and believed. True faith hears about God and believes that God. She heard about God. Through the passerbys, through some of her clients, through the news in that city that came about the Israelites and the God of the Israelites. And look at her term. She said that he's God over heaven and God over earth. And I know that your God has given you this land and she believed the promises that God has given to them. She believed it was not her promise. She was not a Jew. She was not uh, in any tribe of the Jew. But she believed God and she received that miracle. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. When we spend time reading God's word, faith develops in us, friends, like Rahab's faith. And such faith is a living faith. You will be rescued from the wrath of the world. You will be rescued from the evil that comes to the wickedness and the wicked people of this world. Provided we have our faith rooted on what God says about him in the word of God. We were like that before we came to faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, the God of this age has blinded the mind of unbelievers. We were living in blindness so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Rahab was like that. But out of that city, everyone was blinded, including the king and his army. There was only one woman whose eyes were opened. And she heard and she believed and her eyes were opened. And there was time in our lives when our eyes were opened by the Word of God in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. It is good and pleases our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It is God's plan that we hear God's word, the gospel, and we come to the knowledge of our truth. We have heard that gospel. We have the book over here right over us where we can read and meditate and root us ourselves in the foundation of Christ Jesus so that this can lead us out of the condemnation that is coming for man and the world that we are living in. Now Paul is telling in 2 Corinthians, those who feel that you are in faith, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5, examine yourself to see whether you are in faith. Do we have a saving faith? Pastor, I am saved 10 years. I'm ministering in the church. But how is your faith, brother? Is it a saving faith? Saving faith will produce deep roots in God's word. 
there will be a life that is transformed, a Christ likeness that comes into a saving faith. And it says, if you truly have, tell that you have a saving faith, you will have fellowship with Christ and his redeemed people. Where is our fellowship? What did Rahab do? She was telling, my old profession is no more my profession. My clients are mean no more to me. For me, now, I find my joy in the company of God's people. Second quality of a believer who is rooted in God's word and his faith is he walks in light and not in darkness. First John chapter 1 verse 6 to 7. If we claim we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus' his son purifies us from all sin. It will be evident in a walking in the light of God. The third thing is to be continually be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 and 9. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's talking about believers. A person who is rooted in God's word is being continually being cleansed by God's blood. Obedient to God's word. Love God rather than the world. The next one. Life characterized by doing what is right. Look at the next one. Maintaining a pure life, a holy life. The next one, decreasing pattern of sin in your life. You cannot tell that you are having a living faith if in 2018 we are struggling with the same temptations we faced in 2017. I'm not telling that saving faith is a life of a believer who is sin free. No, we cannot be sin free in this world. But there should be a decreasing longing and passion to the sins as we mature in Jesus Christ. Is there in us? Is there in me? That will tell me whether I am a true believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. First John chapter 3 verse 5 to 6. But you know that he has appeared so that he may take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. How can we call ourselves Saved and having saving faith, if we battle with the same problem, what we were battling two years ago. No one who continues in sin has either seen him nor known him. So continuing in sin is a big problem. Habitual sin is a big problem. If we are not able to overcome that, we don't have a saving faith. Today, God can give us freedom, friends. God who delivered Rahab, one of the worst in society. If God can do that to her, God can do greater things for me. Amen? Moving forward. What is the second quality of a faith that saves out of Rahab's life? Number two is faith produce fruit at all times. It produces fruit at all times. What is the fruit it produces? See, once your faith is rooted in God's word, and then it has to show by producing the fruit. What is it? The fruit that Rahab produced. Patience. When the king's messengers came, did she panic? No. Was she upset? No. She knew she is doing the right thing. She told a lie. That's wrong. That was not needed. But by saving the, uh, and pr protecting the spies, she knew it was the right thing. It produced good works. What is it? To the kingdom of God. She protected the spies. Her, her faith is so admirable. She never panicked. Even when Jericho fell down. She never panicked. Why? She knew that there is a God. Who had given me a word. And I am sure that my family. Me and my family will be protected. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is the fruit? The fruit of the spirit. Love. Joy. Peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, gentleness, self-control. 
the nine fruit of the spirit covered in love should be the things that proceeds from our mouth if we have a true and saving faith so when we need patience it will automatically produce patience when we have to show love instead of hatred it will show love when we have to be courageous it will show perseverance our christian life has to produce faith that saves it has to produce fruit like that of rahab the third thing i want to tell the faith that saves is a faith that has concern for others salvation look at this lady the moment she went into prostitution her mother would have said i disown this girl she is no more part of my family father said i don't have a girl like this don't step into my house no relatives were with her you see she is a lured lady living all alone running her prostitution business but when salvation comes when faith in god comes her perspective towards her family changes they they were enemies and now she is telling i am going to pray i am going to intercede for my family save them where is that burden where is that burden for unsaved family members starting with our home if she could rescue the entire town she would have done it but what was in her limit was her own family and she interceded friends if the faith of god come into our heart automatically we will partake in the gospel of jesus christ we will partake in the great commission we will share the gospel we will start praying for people who are in our family and what happened the entire family was protected and the city was given into flames rehab was considered righteous for what she did what is it she heard and believed she produced the fruit she is a hero a daring faith and as she had a faith that what happened she started interceding for her family friends if the faith of god come into our heart automatically we will partake in the gospel of jesus christ we will partake in the great commission we will share the gospel we will start praying for people who are in our family and what happened the entire family was protected and the city was given into flames rehab was considered righteous for what she did what is it she heard and believed she produced the fruit she is a hero you know what happened because of what she did all the honor that she lost god multiplied and gave it back to rehab when god wanted somebody's line to look for a son jesus to be born it was born out of the loins and the line of rehab you see the genealogy of jesus in matthew's gospel chapter 1 was 5 we can find rehab's name mentioned over there when god wanted to give the greatest king for israel david god decided that it has to come out of that lady rehab god grafted her forgave her past her shame her guilt and everything and god grafted her and honored her in the kingdom of god protected her from the destruction that was coming this is exactly that